Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessings from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power of work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. He is at work within each and every one of us in order to bring glory to himself, says the text. But before we look at his power at work in our lives and how he lives and loves and works through us, let's look at some of the earlier verses from our text. So, I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Do not lose heart. That is sometimes advice that's easier to take than others. Do not lose heart, this text tells us, because someone is praying for you. That's why he mentions that he's on his knees. Someone has been praying for you. Paul prays for the church in Ephesus. Parents are often, if not always, praying for their children. Children pray for their parents. Congregations pray for each other. Pastors, teachers, families, friends and neighbors, all praying for those who they're connected to. Praying for you on your birthday. Praying for you on your anniversary. When you are sick. When you are celebrating. We always have good reasons to pray for each other. And while we may not do it as often or as well as we should, we do. That's what God calls us to do. But we don't have to worry, because if we're not holding up our end of the bargain, the Holy Spirit prays with words that we can't even comprehend. You can see why we are all told to pray without ceasing. We've got a lot to pray for. And a lot to pray about. That we and those that we pray for would see and know and do his will in our lives. That he would protect us as he promises to. That he would help us as we struggle against our own flesh. We pray for his church. We pray for our community. We pray for the world. A very comprehensive list of things that God calls us to pray for and should be a regular part of our prayer life. That is what Christians are called to do. And we are sure that every petition we submit is prayed for us by the Holy Spirit, as I said earlier. Even the things that we don't know what to pray for is heard. But the Father, through the Son, by the Father, through the Son, and he answers all prayers. There's this myth out there of the unanswered prayer. He, of course, answers prayer in three ways. You've heard me say it many times. Yes, it is my will to grant that request. Be patient. I will grant that request in accord with my good timing. Or no, that which you ask for is not in your best interest. But sometimes it's easy to lose heart, to grow impatient when God says no or wait. We think the prayer is unanswered when it's an answer. We just don't like it. I know that not trusting in him is a sinful thing. We all know that. But we still have our worries. We still have our doubts. We strongly sometimes get comfort from the things that made us miserable. 
Unfortunately, we take comfort in things we shouldn't take comfort in. Like, something like what I've heard said before, and you may have heard it said as well, the baby who sits in the soiled, unchanged diaper. The logic is, I know that it stinks terribly, but it's warm, and it's comfortable, and it's mine. But we know and love a God who wants to make us clean. So we have to let go of our smelly sins, no matter how much we think we enjoy them. We are slaves to them, unfortunately, sometimes. We do not have to figure out what it is. He writes it on our hearts. We know what sin is, and we know that it's wrong. He further tells us in his word, clearly, in case we are confused. Love God first, honor his name, honor his day, honor the authority that he has blessed you with in your lives and different people to give you things to say and do, to guide you and protect you. Protect and care for all life. Be fruitful and multiply, well, multiply in a lifelong relationship between one man and one woman. Be trustworthy, be honest, be happy, with the people and things that God has blessed you with in your lives. Be a good steward of them. And when we fall short, when we lose heart, know that you are being prayed for. And pray. Pray as he taught us to. We pray through the Psalms. We pray with the prophets. We pray through the creeds. We pray to the one whose love cannot be comprehended by our small minds. And we can take comfort in him. This is the power that this text speaks of. The power is and resides in God's people doing the things that God calls them to do. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Or in the word, words of one of my favorite hymns, I want to walk as a child of the light, the refrain goes, in him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen.